Hello food fans, going to have some hamburgers today, different kind of hamburgers, I call them pizza burgers. Uh, we, we will be using bread, whole wheat bread instead of a bun. And we have the hamburger patties already made into uh, uh, patties that uh, we don't have to shape in any way. They will be the correct shape and these are 85% uh, per uh, lean, 15% fat. And they cost about a dollar and a quarter per patty and we shall make two sandwiches to go with our meal today. We'll also have a uh, salad and some beverage and a dessert. So let's get started. We are frying up some of the hamburgers here, two hamburger patties to be exact. And these cost about a dollar and a quarter each patty. And they're about like a quarter pounder, maybe smaller. I've got some frozen french fries in here that are inexpensive. I've had them for a long, long time. You can fry up a few slices of a potato. This is going to be very good. This is just part of it. These uh, hamburger patties will be cooked again inside of an oven in just a uh, few minutes. The hamburger patties have cooked enough on both sides. I'm going to turn off the heat and let them uh, simmer there and uh, continue to cook for a little bit longer and then we will uh, transform those hamburgers into pizza burgers. We have the hamburger on top of uh, some whole wheat bread there and I'm going to put uh, the other slice of bread on top of that. Then I'm going to get some spaghetti sauce or pizza sauce and put on the top here with some cheese and then I'll bake it in a conventional oven for about uh, four minutes at a high heat and everything will melt and look real nice. That's what it looks like with the grated cheese on top. I'll prepare the other pizza burger and uh, get ready to put them into the oven. That's what it looks like before I put it into the oven and we will uh, put it into the oven for a period of time which will melt the cheese on top and it will start looking like a pizza. And it all looks good, and it is hot. I don't know if I can cut this with the pizza cutter or not. Uh, I'll probably pick up the second pizza burger. I'm cutting through the uh, ground beef there. That's pretty nice. That looks uh, almost good enough to eat. The combination of pizza and hamburger, there are many possibilities. Just buying a uh, pizza, frozen pizza that has uh, the pizza sauce and the cheese on it and then cook some hamburger in a separate uh, pan and put it on the pizza and set it in the oven for a few minutes. That's one way of doing it. But we did it another way. Let's see if I can touch this. Keep the kids away from the hot stuff and the sharp pizza cutters. Because I bet they can find some imaginative things to do with the pizza cutter. Let's see if I can pick this up. Is it warm enough or cool enough? There's a uh, good thick piece of hamburger, ground beef. I have another great successful recipe from the Feature Man Kitchen, the pizza burger. And for the health food fans, you have bread that is whole wheat bread, so you're getting plenty of fiber, plenty of protein in this also. The cheese has protein and the meat has protein. So does the bread, but not as much. I've got coleslaw waiting 
my cabbage salad every day. That is very, very good. Now, a person could put a lot of uh, Italian seasonings into the pizza on top as it's cooking. I don't like a lot of seasoned food. I, I never put salt on my food. And I usually don't put pepper. Sometimes I put pepper on the food depending on what it is. But I'm not uh, an oregano expert or uh, so many other things that uh, are available in the spice cabinet. Mm. That is good. That is very good. We'll talk a little bit about show business too here today. Coleslaw time. Coleslaw is a salad that uses raw cabbage. Probably a lot of really good nutrients in this. Very good coleslaw. This came from uh, Kroger, the coleslaw. It was on sale. Get some uh, root beer. This meal, total price well under $5 per serving, if you're just making a few servings for a small family or a uh, fraternity, sorority, whatever, this would be a very good choice. I think everybody will like this. Do you eat french fries with your fingers? I think so. Get my old binder here with lots of information about jobs I've worked on. When I first started working as a movie extra, I started keeping track of uh, all the shows I worked on. So I have lots of information. What is this? This is the what is this? Comedy Doctor Detroit. Well, these are names, the titles of uh, movies I've worked on. It should be nice to know what they were because I can't read my writing. Dead men don't wear plaid. I worked that one day, but I did not do any scenes. They never did use me in any scenes. That's a funny movie, Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid, directed by Carl Reiner. Starring Steve Martin. Um, Mommy Dearest, I worked one day on that. Uh, to Be or Not To Be, it was a Mel Brooks movie. I worked, uh, let's see how many days did I work here? I'll, I'll probably have it here. One, two, three, four. Four different days on To Be or Not To Be with Mel Brooks, and that was a lot of fun. He was funny all the time. S uh, deal of the Century, that was with Chevy Chase. Unfaithfully Yours, that was uh, Dudley Moore. Dudley Moore was in Un Unfaithfully Yours. Uncommon Valor, there's two, two movies that start with the letter U, Uncommon Valor and uh, Unfaithfully Yours. Um, by the way, uh, Dudley Moore was nice to work with. Uh, for those of you who don't know who Dudley Moore was, he was a fun actor. His big movie was called Arthur. 
and he was a piano player, really excellent piano player, and just an all-around nice person. I enjoyed working with him. Worked with him a couple of times. Couldn't tell you the other movie. Oh, uh, Best Defense. Terrible movie. One of the worst movies I've ever seen, but I did get to work in it, and I made a lot of good money on it, so I enjoyed it. Plus, working with Dudley Moore was always a nice experience. And the uh, movie Best Defense brought me a lot of money. I'll tell you a story about how I happened to get on that. I was going to my dentist. I was in the dentist's office waiting, I guess, for um, probably just filling or cleaning or whatever the dentist was going to do, nothing important. But my beeper went off. My beeper let me know that my answering service had a message for me, so I called the answering service, so they said call Central. And uh, whoever the casting director was says, we need you right away over at Paramount. You're going to be photo doubling a guy. So get over there. So I canceled the dental appointment, went over to Paramount. And the first thing that happened, I, w I started working on Best Defense. So I got a day's pay as an extra for that. Next thing that happened, it was after the uh, whatever the late hour was. It was a nighttime call, in that it was past noon or two or three o'clock, so it was late in the day. So I got extra compensation for the uh, late uh, time that I was working. And then they put a beard on me. Because the character that I was photo doubling had a beard, so they put a beard on me. That was seventeen dollars more when they did hair effects on your face or whatever. They uh, made me look more like the person I was doubling, so that got me an extra seventeen dollars. So I got seventeen dollars plus the late whatever the amount was for that plus the day's pay. Uh, then, the next thing that happened, they took myself and one other person out to the Paramount uh, commissary. That's where we would get our food when we were at Par Paramount. But this was late in the day and the commissary was closed. We were using the commissary as a set. And they decided what they wanted was for the other fellow, a young fellow, to pick me up along with two other stunt guys and they were going to throw me into a car, a Cadillac, old 1950s Cadillac. And that scene is in the movie, Best Defense, somewhere. And you see me being thrown into a car and they actually physically picked me up and threw me into the back seat of the uh, back door of the car. And uh, that was pretty much it. And we were released. And so I got paid a regular amount plus a photo double, which is $10 plus $17 for the beard, plus uh, I got a stand-in Ten dollar pay because I was even although I was doing a photo double, I also was doing a stand-in when they would be setting the camera. So I got an extra ten dollars there. Then they gave me a silent bit, which meant about fifty dollars more, which was nice. And then I put in a claim, a pro, what they call protest. Uh, I said I was. Um, upgraded to a SAG paycheck, not an SEG, SEG Screen Actors Guild, SAG Screen Actors Guild. So I said I was upgraded. And that would mean a lot more money to me because I'd get money every time the movie was shown on TV. I'd get residuals. 
So they said, no, it's not a uh, upgrade, it's just a silent bit. So I protested and I won. If they would have agreed with me on the set, all I would have taken in financially would have been a day's pay at Screen Actors Guild rate plus all the uh, benefits of that. But instead I got all my SCG uh, Screen Extras Guild payments first, then about a month later I got the big check from Screen Actors Guild. And over the years I probably have made a thousand dollars or more just <clears throat> for that one late night thing that I did after I canceled a, a dentist appointment. Hamburger is good. Pizza burger. I think kids will like this because it's messy. Don't let the kids be around the hot stove or touch the hot food when it comes out of the oven or whatever. But maybe this would be a nice one to let the kids help you put it together before you put it into the stove. Let's see what kind of mess they can make with the cheese. I'm lucky to be me, to have had the fun that I have had. There certainly are a lot of things happening these days that didn't happen 50 years ago. Things flying, and well, there, there were UFOs. But we weren't shooting them down. There are just a lot of things happening that are in part part of the modern technology of the world, what people do the way they do it. What's your favorite car? Do you like a car that has a three-speed or four-speed transmission? Do you like a automatic? Do you like the uh, GPS device? Do you want an old classic car from the 1950s, 1940s, 1930s, 1920s? Give me a 1955 Packard Caribbean or a 1946 Packard Henny, H-E-N-N-Y or H-E-N-N-E-Y Packard 1946 limousine. If you were going to uh, an award show, especially as an honorary Perhaps you might be receiving an Academy Award or something. You're going to the big show and you're concerned about your suit or your dress or your hair. What kind of car do you arrive in? I would not be in a stretch limo for any imaginary reason. The car to arrive in would be a 1940s. It doesn't even have to be pristine condition. They can be a little dented here and there. But if you want to make an entrance, if you want to be an individual, if you want to do things your way, don't do what everybody else does. Everybody else arrives in a stretch limo and thinks, boy, people are going to be impressed I'm in a long car. No, they're not. Make your appearance in front of the theater as the crowd is looking for you, there comes your car. You're in a Crosley, C-R-O-S-L-E-Y. See what a Crosley station wagon looks like. Or perhaps an Allstate, 
arrive for your award in a Henry J. I would recommend places to be for your show business career. Las Vegas, Southern California, New York City, Nashville. Those are places where people won't laugh at you when you say you want to be a big star. They will tell you the same thing. Lots of protein here. The first movie I worked in, I'm not sure if it was Electric Horseman or Melvin and Howard, no, it was Player with Dean Paul Martin and Ally McGraw. That was the first movie I worked in. I worked in TV series. I worked in Vegas, the TV series. Did six episodes of Vegas. Robert Urich was a wonderful, nice person. He and I had fun being silly on the set. Wardrobe at uh, the Vegas show gave me a robe to wear once. I was supposed to be a hospital patient. And the robe was um, a little bit too short for me, my height. But they kept me in the scene with the robe. And as we were getting ready to shoot the scene, I said, they're, they're anxious to see my legs. And Robert Drake said, I've seen better legs on a pool table. He left us much too soon. He was a wonderful, very nice person. You would like him if you worked with him uh, mowing a lawn or painting a picture on the side of a building or whatever. He was just a nice, friendly, uh, soft-spoken, fun person. Life is good for me. I hope it's good for you. Of the early movies that I worked on when I was in Las Vegas, I recommend Melvin and Howard, and I do get to kiss Mary Steenburgen in that movie. A wedding sequence. I was a cowboy. I can also tell you this is a very filling meal. You got the hamburger with the pizza top. And there's just a lot of food there. I don't know how many ounces this would be total. Um, about four ounces per patty, so that'd be uh, eight ounces, half a pound. Plus the bread, plus the cheese, plus the coleslaw, plus the french fries. Another person I got to work with when I was on the Vegas series, I was on the set one time, and I think his name is pronounced Louis, it's spelled L-U-I-S, Louis or Louis, um, 
Jordan or Jordan, J O R D A N. One of the interesting things about him, he was probably about 60 or 65 years old when I worked with him on that show. He looked like he was about 40. He walked around like he was about 20. He had uh, what appeared to be perfect health. And he ran lines with himself. Running a line, if you're a stand-in for an actor, quite often what you will be doing is running lines with your actor. Your actor wants to rehearse his scene and perhaps he's talking to someone and he's saying where did they go and the other person says, they went over here then he says why did they do that and he wants to get his timing and his punctuation and all to where it makes the most sense so he runs his lines with a stand and he says his lines the stand in says the other person's line but with Louis Jordan, he ran his own lines. He would walk where he was going to be walking when he did his scene. And he would talk out loud. There's nobody there with him. And he would answer himself and then go back into his character. He was an interesting person. I, I never did have a conversation with him, but I enjoyed watching him work on uh, Vegas. I think, I think his big movie was Gigi, G-I-G-I. -I. Worked with Barbie Benton on Vegas. And again, I didn't have any conversations with her, but I worked with her. I worked with a fellow in Vegas whose name was Red McIlvain. He was a famous radio announcer in Las Vegas. He had one of the most popular radio programs in Las Vegas. And he was upgraded on uh, the Vegas episode that I worked in. I'm, I'm not sure what it was all about. But the thing I like most about Red McIlvain is each year he would assemble a group of people at the Frontier Hotel and he'd give away what he called his Bummer Awards. The winner of the Bummer Award for Worst Las Vegas Singer, the winner of the Bummer Award for the Worst Commercial on Local TV. And Red McIlvain would give the awards and up in the balcony sat the, I think it was the people who produce the shows at the Frontier and they'd be having a steak dinner with waiters bringing them food and beverages and all. And the rest of us who were audience, we would sit in the main showroom and it was the dinner show. So our dinner was a bag of potato chips and a glass of water. And Red McIlvain came up with that, the Bummer Awards. We need Bummer Awards now. We need comedy. We need fun. Hopefully everything's been good for you. Hopefully your family, your friends, your dog, your cat, whatever is important to you is in good shape at this time. But be sure to let me know what kind of car you like. And if you would want to pull up in, in the front of the theater to get an award for an award show, what would you be driving? Would you show, there, show up there in a John Deere tractor?
Also, the uh, Feature Man channel at YouTube, just in case you don't know about it. I think all the channels, but certainly Feature Man channel, has a community area where quite often I'll put a poll, P-O-L-L -L poll, asking the subscribers and viewers to answer some questions. And to get to the community section, you search for Feature Man Channel YouTube. And the page that comes up, right in the middle of the page, you should see the word community. Right in the very middle of the page. And click on that, and go to the community section, and you'll see whatever the question is that I'm asking at this time. I have no complaints. I was lucky to get into show business. I did things. I made myself available at different places where I knew something would be happening. I got into the unions, the guilds. Root beer time, 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 root beer time. Root beer tastes good. I'm not fond of the uh, artificially sweetened root beer or any soda pop beverage. That has artificial sweetener. It tastes fine. This is good. I'm on a choo choo train. Must be something in the way over there. Let me get my secret dessert, but I'll do it in order to make the video a little bit shorter. I'll eat the rest of the burger after I eat this. Boy, it takes me a long reach to get to the secret dessert, which is Chocolate pudding. Chocolate pudding is good. Mm. But it's hard to get loose. <clears throat> this just does not want to get loose. There we go. And believe me, I will eat the rest of the pizza burger. <coughs> there is the secret dessert, the chocolate pudding. 25 cents at Aldi's. That is so good.
It probably has some nutri nutritional value. But I'm not sure. Chocolate is supposed to be good for you. You can find stories about chocolate's benefits. Just uh, get your advice from a doctor. Thank you very much for stopping by. Thank you for coming over. Thank you for the nice conversation. And thank you for watching.